Hi there, Omar fans. I am so excited because today I'm talking about women changing the game. Yes, sisters are doing it for themselves. And today I'm speaking to a top, top triathlete. I am so excited to introduce her to you, Magda Nivot. Thanks for talking to me, Magda. You're a busy woman. I am. I am. I am. <laughs> like everyone, but it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome to make time for you. Okay, fantastic. I've been watching the world champs and let me tell you, oh, I am in total awe what these women are doing, but <laughs> I am just like completely bowled over but about what women are achieving in sports um, these days. Yeah, it's amazing. I want to take you back. I was one of those little fat girls who never got anywhere with sports. So, what was your first sporting event that you can remember when you were little? I would say it was probably a running. Like it's yeah. always like a little bit of like running a, in primary school where you do like a 50 meter or 40 meter, eh? Like and you just like run as fast as you can. Did you yeah. win? I, I would say yes. Like I've got a twin sister and she's probably going to say no, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> you have a twin sister? Yes. Is she, and is she into sports at all? Yes, she is, but she's doing it more for the fun of it. Okay. Um, and enjoying it, yes. Okay, that's amazing. So... At what point, you know, did did you have a, a, like a, a this the moment that you decided that you're going to become a triathlete? Could you just not make up your mind about what you want to do? <laughs> so I've always I've always been running. I've always done sport. I come from a, like a really small town, so that's what you do there to to oh. like you know like during the weekends or sometimes at the, uh, after school. That's what you do. Like you play sports, and that's where you um, meet new people. Um, so it was always good but then I was also actually a bit chubby and a little bit fat and I think when I was 12 I said like I'm gonna change this like I am not going to be a fat girl I'm gonna start running so I was okay. actually the one that wake up before school and went running so I've always been into running and at university that's actually where it started to become running and cycling and swimming because okay. the, the interest fact is because I started triathlon um, because they weren't a women's running team at university. It was only me that wanted to do the track running. And then um, I saw like there's a triathlon club starting. I thought, oh, well, let me just go and do that. Then. And that's how I actually started triathlon. Okay, so you, so so you were you you were running. So mm. the swimming just came, and the cycling. So this old thing, this thing that they say about old uh, you know, old dogs can't learn new tricks. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can cycle a little bit. Uh, so so you, you like started from scratch with the cycling and the swimming because you weren't really competitive in it. Yes, yeah, so swimming we did at school, but not okay. like majorly. But mm -hmm. you can swim. I've never actually had a swim coach. So I had to like completely start from scratch. And I only learned cycling when I was then 18 or 19 or like, you know, proper like competing in cycling. You can't cycle. Um, and then started from scratch and took it from there and totally changed that. Well, you know, what? that is completely amazing because I know that that overseas athletes, I mean, they like start from there about five or six that, you know, that, that, they, that they work. So it's really incredible uh, what you've reached uh, up to this point. I mean, you're like one of the top triathletes in the world and you do the Ironman. Yeah, and Ironman, like, <laughs> it's where you swim, bike and run forever. It's not just like the, the small one. But yeah, I think it's just, you can like really easily learn new techniques if you want to like really do it like it's so easy and um, you just need to put your mind to it and then like go for it so so that must be one of the characteristics uh, that you must believe in yourself what are, what are the other characteristics that you need to become a professional athlete i mean in south africa it's not easy being a professional athlete no i would say like definitely that deep deep self-belief is one of the characteristics that you just said and also patience like because you think you've got this thing like you just want to go today and be a professional athlete and go but in south africa it's really difficult because mm -hmm. you don't always get all the backing that you need to become a professional athlete so you need to find ways to get there in other ways than like where they would do like in Europe or something mm. where they would get backing so like really have the patience to change bit by bit by bit every year and see where you can get there and then um, 
and and definitely be a hard worker you need to like be able to no matter what like it's not always going to go your way and then keep on working hard and get up and go and you need a lot of talent obviously you need talent you need talent but you can work hard to get there as well no definitely i would say for being a professional athlete you need talent um and definitely the love for it and endurance i want to ask you and i'm so happy that you are in south africa that you why are you staying in south africa are you passionate about teaching other athletes, helping other people, other South Africans? I always, they always ask me this question, you know, like when I'm in Europe, they go like, oh, why are you, why are you staying in South Africa? It's always such a travel and it's such a mission. And I'm like, because there's so much talent in South Africa and you want them to like believe that they can also do it. And you want to develop it because if we just go overseas and then I go and be a professional athlete and I make it and it doesn't really change anything. Like you want to be, yeah, and you want to change lives and you want to go and tell them okay because through sport um the change that comes into a, a, through a person in like um doing sport and doing triathlon or challenging yourself is amazing and is huge so i think uh the the route for me like being a professional athlete is for me to be better but it's actually to actually make other people believe in themselves and get something out of them as well wow that's amazing <laughs> I read on your, uh, I think it's your website or your blog, um, I read of one of the athletes that started with you a long time ago. She said that she couldn't ride a bike, she couldn't run, and now she's part of the, she's taking uh, part in the Ironman, I think. Yeah, I've got a few athletes that come to me and they can't swim, like mostly swimming is a massive thing. And uh, um, or maybe they are they are overweight and unfit, and they won't be you know they won't even think of like being able to finish a massive endurance event like that. And then you see if you bit by bit can change it for them. It takes time. It's not like they start with me and then in four weeks we go and do a race. Um, it's always like you you they need to like learn how to to live a little bit like an athlete. Oh, okay. So what do you do to live like an athlete? Give me a few tips. Oh, okay, okay. So for a professional athlete, you definitely need to have like a proper, um, like everything change actually, because I am, um, I like adrenaline stuff, like adrenaline junkie. I want to jump off things and I want to just go think. Then I started becoming a professional athlete and now all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, I can't um, jump off here because what if I'm going to get hurt? You know, like you can't just do things. But I think all over just being health conscious as an athlete, like you can't like just eat what you want even mm-hmm. people think you do because uh, you sometimes you do because you train a lot but um you need to be conscious about your decisions and what you eat and where you're going and are you sleeping enough and um you say no to a lot of things because of the reason like you need to rest and people don't always get that so i think your life as a professional athlete really changed a lot as a general athlete also you need to have like a very conscious of like healthy living is the major thing i would say like it changes as an athlete discipline. is there a person is there a oh, discipline mm. okay get you mm, mm, is mm. There, do you have a person in your life no like um Currently, I've got a lot of persons in my life, all my athletes. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, like I've got a lot of athletes and yeah, they take up a lot of time with me. But um, no, for me, currently, it's only me and my sport. Okay, so that, yeah. I mean, so that, so it's quite alone, you know, you. It is very alone. And, um, uh, but it's, it was, yeah, so I, you travel and actually I've been in Europe now three weeks ago and I travel and um, I'm in this amazing, amazing place in Germany and I'm sitting there and I've just won a race and that evening I'm sitting there and it's my birthday and it's just me and I sit there and I'm thinking, so is this now it? It, you know, is this now what they say is professional life all about? Um, but yes, it is, and and it, it's good. <laughs> Your, yeah, it takes a very special person, a lot of lot of sacrifices. Yes, yes, but I think in the end, what you get out of it every day, you know, like when you go and train and you you challenge yourself, where it clicks, that's where you get that adrenaline from. From okay, yeah, this is worth it. Like, um, yeah. and you challenge yourself every day, and um, and seeing a improvement. And, you know, like two years ago, I couldn't do what I do now. And um, and then still knowing that you still need to improve more. So mm. I think that is a major thing. Because that's what's going to keep you going. Yeah. Are you going to change your route on the way or don't you know yet? 
<laughs> I don't know yet, but I must tell you, it definitely changed as I went on. You know, like first you start and you think you're going to be this professional athlete. And it's easy. Like you are good enough and people tell you you are good enough and you start a journey and, and in your head you think uh, you go and you do a few races and you win a few races and get money. That's how easy it is. <laughs> and oh. then you start doing it and then you go like, oh no, it's it, this is not how easy it is. Okay. Like uh, there's so much things going on in uh, at the background for being an athlete. You know, like it's man managing you as an athlete and also um, and and then uh, and getting it right. Like because you think this is the way to train and this is the way to do it and and then you do it for a year a year and a half or something and then it's not the way to do it and then you need to change and then you go like okay but then let's adapt and, and we change and um and we think okay but let's do it this way i probably is going to change more and more as as i continue because um in the end the idea is always to to be the best in the sport you know to be the best best of south africa and actually to be so good that uh, people start talking about individual sports women doing the sport, yes. you know. But yes. for me to be there, like you need to be the best. So Absolutely. you can't uh, make decisions in life that that is not good enough because you need to be the best. You can't just be average. Okay. Yeah, yes. I hear. I hear what you're <laughs> so what is your message then to other like the little chubby girls like me? To, to get where you are now? How, how, how do we get there? I would say definitely dream big, but like narrow it down, like make it smaller. You know, like don't think you want, because same with me, like I always wanted to be an athlete, but it always actually seemed so far away to be able to, to get it done. Um, so then that's why I studied sports science and I did sport and uh, become a sports scientist to be able to work with professional athletes because that okay. was the way I thought to be a professional athlete to get closer to them is to go and work in the system. So I worked actually with a rugby team like few the Puma rugby and so on and then later on I'm like oh I can do it myself. So um, and then I started like bits by bits like making smaller girls and say so, okay let's just start running. Okay let's get to the first race. Okay do a smaller race do a bigger race you know like really like make it make the goal smaller so that you can achieve mm. it and in the end go to the bigger one but don't don't like not dream big you know like really mm. set that girls as high as you can and think it must actually seem like this is crazy you're not going to be able to do it so yeah i think like running a marathon for you hey eh? like don't you think like and then <laughs> and then so, just like oh i'll talk to you about that so so because i'm in my 60s now what, how yeah. old is your how how old is the oldest athlete in your club? Ah, oh, she's actually sixty two, <gasps> and and she did um, a, a sprint triathlon uh, in May, where it's like really short, um, but also for her to be able to do it was massive and to be able to finish the swim. And the same with, with something like that, like you say, as she started now also just to be fit and healthy. Okay. And I'm not gonna make her do a full Ironman or like, mm. it's not gonna, so just make it a little bit smaller and just change that a little bit. So she was also only a runner and she did the first sprint in May. Amazing, so little yeah. steps, baby steps. Little steps, little, little, little baby there. steps and yeah. um, yeah, and then achieve it bits by bits and that makes you hungry, eh? And then you want more and then you start believing in yourself and then you see the change actually in everyday life because wow. I see it in my athletes um, and in myself, like you think, you know, you can't do anything and then and then you achieve things and then you actually take that confidence in like just your normal normal day. So, and tell me in COVID, because obviously everything changed with COVID. I think that was, mm. you know, that was like the biggest change at, well, mm -hmm. for the whole world. But, but being an athlete, did you take part in anything um, at that point? Or did you just have to stay at home and train? It was so difficult. Um, so the first few months as an athlete you try to always make it positive because that's what we do every day um, your brain turns into positive mode so always when you get a situation so that first few weeks I was like always positive thinking what can you do at home like you trained at home and you did a few things but then it just started to like really hit me um, knowing that you won't be able to do any races at all and you won't be able to travel even and then we got that glimpse of 
there is going to be a race and then you train for it, but then it gets cancelled. And mm. then remember the pools was closed for long, eh? so we couldn't mm. get into a pool at all. So luckily with all the virtual things, we could do stuff um, on indoor trainers at mm. home, uh, which was great. Um, and that helped. And it's also, oh, you need to to quickly change everything how we do it. So we never actually, uh, I never actually trained indoors. I didn't like it at all. And then I was forced to change a little bit and go and say, okay, let's, let's start training indoors. And um, that's where uh, the treadmill or I had a treadmill, it wasn't very fast, but at least you could do it. Um, yeah. And then the indoor trainers helped a lot. And then all the virtual racing started. So we started like where you can actually race against other people online, which was actually so much fun. Um, so you were like racing people in France and racing people in Germany online on this little, um, uh, almost like video games, you know, with yeah. you on your indoor trainer. So it was so much fun, actually, because then um, it felt like playing again. So it wasn't yes. that serious where you need to go and you need to go to a race and all that. No, <laughs> so, you could be in your PJs yeah. and just jump on the bike. That's lucky. <laughs> yeah. Maybe or that afterwards. can become a new event. <laughs> <laughs> PJ cycling. <laughs> yes, virtual cycling. That's amazing. So yes. you were competing against like overseas uh, uh, athletes. Did you like, um, like set up a meet? You set up a meet and uh, what a nice thing as well is it went so far as like you could have actually done um, team races. So you had like say a team of six. Uh, it was actually me and a few five guys. So we were a team and then you race um, other teams. And then you've got like your earphones and you talk to each other. Like, but they're obviously in different towns. So you go like, come Amazing. on, come up next to me, you know, yes. and you were racing. Um, so I did that actually in my garage, you know, <laughs> racing people. <laughs> that is incredible. So, yes. yes, I'm a little bit jealous because I was just stuck at home watching TV. And let me tell you, you get sick and tired of watching the same reruns. So, you <laughs> actually had a little bit of fun. I actually had a little bit of fun. And then also, didn't you not do those challenges where you need to see if you can, like, uh, for how long you can keep the toilet paper up in the air? Or, like, did you not do that? <laughs> Funny enough, no. <laughs> I obviously missed out on a whole, uh, like a whole cultural experience, uh, like online experience. Um, I'll, I'll keep it in mind for next time. Yeah, next time, yeah. next time. <laughs> and the first time when you, uh, when you were outside and you were taking part in a race, was it without spectators the first time? Yes, it was without spectators. Actually, you know what? I think actually this year, April was the first time where we could like allow spectators you know where spectators yes. were allowed but our sport is a bit difficult or di different because it's not like in a closed arena you know so okay. it's like you run um you know down the roads you can't really um you can't really say pe to, to people they can't stand stand next to the road but things oh, okay. like where the race starts or where we come together to put our bikes in the transition area where it's a holding area where your bike waits for you before okay. after the swim normally there's big crowds as you get into transition area where now there were there were nobody um and also at the finish lines like normally when you go into that red carpet it's like just like this line of people All people cheering on cheering. so the first um two years there were nothing so you were just like yeah. running finishing the race also you take your own medal you know put it around your neck and then just walk walk away where this year april um in south africa was the first time and since you know beginning of 2020 where we could actually have spectators there and it was amazing i can imagine yes. hey yeah then you you st then you start to you know appreciate uh there's you know other people around you it's it's yes. not just yourself and then again you remember why you do it yeah, yeah like you want to like run and like you know grab the hands and the, celebrate with them and enjoy it yes. um and I, I think for them as well like uh i take for instance my mom and dad like they are part of this journey of mine uh, so much as you know as i do it like i literally just do it every day but they also want to see your success so they also want to be there and they they just want to support you. So I think for them, it's also fun to just be part of it again. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Where are you heading to next? I mean, physically, what's your next yeah. um, 
um, event that you're taking part in? So the next event is actually uh, the Ironman World Championships. Oh. And, and oh, you're going to love this. It is in Hawaii. Um, Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's beautiful. They say it's the most beautiful swim start where you are sta- you like because what we do is you go into the ocean and then you like kind of like just wait there before the start. And they said like if you like look down, you can just actually see the sea turtles and you can just see all this amazing fish. Oh, amazing. You. Um, so it's always been in Hawaii. It's, it's a massive. It's such a there's a lot of history in that race since 1982 it's always every year in Hawaii so for as a triathlete that's where you want to go you know like you want to go to the big island so this year would actually be my first time going there as and as a professional athlete um and that is the 6th of October so that will be okay. my that's what I'm now training for so it's called Iron Man for a Iron reason Man. <laughs> there are lots of men. It's very male, uh, um, dominated by men. Yes. So as a woman, uh, extra extra challenges, ne? Yes, definitely. And you see it. It sometimes it amazes me that we're still having this, you know, conversation and like still struggling with it. But you can see it. We've got coverage, live coverage during our race. Um, but it's always there at the main, you know, at the men's race. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, it's different. It's definitely still there. Um, and I, I must say that the, they are trying to change it, but. Um, it's getting there slightly, but we're still not there yet. It's going to take long now because it's been centuries. Women yeah. are only, I mean, we only got the vote the other day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what they've changed this year for the first time, which I'm excited for, is they they um, parted, like they said, they separated the races. So the women's race is going to be on the 6th of October and the men's race is going to be on the 8th of October. So it's going to be different. So it's going to be totally only at the focus on our race then. So I hope it makes a difference. I think it will make a huge difference, you know, because yes. then you don't have split focus. And yes. I, I mean, frankly, women are much better looking to, you know, to watch <laughs> than the guy. But that's me. So I will be there with your parents. Well, I'll be cheering on the team. Virtually. Your parents, are they going with you? No, no, they're also going to need to watch online. But okay. um, yeah, at least you would be able to then see the girls as well. Yeah. And not the guys. Yeah. <laughs> so what what is your preparation now for an Ironman? Because you've now, you've already started. So what what, yes. what are the steps that you need to take? Yeah, no, like you need to like step by step, like small, like for, to prepare for Ironman is, it depends on what you need to work on, you know, like where's your, say for me, like you work a little bit more on the swimming or you need to let your running come down or so on. But you do a lot of volume. So for me, my daily life would be between, it depends on what you do, but between five and seven hours of training a day. Um, so you like a full-time job, like you train mm. all day long. Um, and then, so I would say you would definitely work it back from 12, it's 12 weeks this week until the race. And then, yeah, work it back, say 12 weeks um, to go. And then um, say, there's four weeks we do this, there's four weeks we do this. And then you just like really like, um, get small girls in between to change, say, okay, you're running or you're cycling or so on. Yeah, that is amazing. So the other thing I want to ask you, so is it financially worth it to be a professional athlete in South Africa? No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. But so yes, what you do, like I go to Ironman now and I need to be top 12 or top 10 there to just pay my trip. And then if I be top eight or top nine, then yes, it's it's okay. You'll make something. But no, you need to perform as a professional triathlete. You need to place top five to earn money from that race. But because you travel, you're always kind of like, mm, maybe you make money, maybe not. So it can be, um, but it's not that easy. Like you like really need to juggle things around to like really make it worth it and say this is your life now you always need to do something on the side and just- which you are doing because yes. because you are training people you've got your own club going i see you've got a couple of sponsors um you get sponsors in south africa but it's mostly um, not financial sponsors 
because obviously also if nothing is really made here so you understand but you get a lot of backing from locals who really tries to help you in products and really helping you to make it easier for you to do the sport uh, because obviously you need a lot of stuff to do triathlon it's very expensive um, and then you've I've got my own club Trivium Triathlon which um, oh, they are amazing and I love working with them but you need to yeah, you need to always like uh, juggle a little bit of coaching and a little bit of um, working with them and then obviously yourself as an athlete. Yeah, that is that's amazing. Yeah, so but you know you're South African. We we was Mark was Mara plan, you know. <laughs> I we, must say like it's a, it's yeah, it's you like a little do this on this side and you do a little bit of that because clearly your your um, sport is your passion because otherwise yes. you because you're not doing it for the money. No, 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 no. But I think like you just said, like um, we do make a plan. We love it. Like it's not if we go if we go overseas and you know something doesn't go according to plan. I do see the South Africans as very adaptable very quickly because we're like uh, okay, uh, you know, I was actually supposed to take this train. It's not on time. That's okay. We'll just quickly make a plan and, and change it. Um, so yeah. yeah definitely like and i do think it helps you in a race because if you've got this massive nine because the race is nine hours right so if you you think in your brain this is how you're going to swim this is how you're going to bike and now you bike and you get a puncture it, we just adapt and like quickly change the wheel and go you know like you just like quickly adapt and then change your plans and go so that's it, it does teach you how to like survive <laughs> so that is like the one good thing about south africa you can come up with a with, with a plan on the in the in that moment yes exactly so it's women's month now what does women's day mean to you personally it's actually so amazing to on women's day or women's month to go and say to see how far we've come and to see and to hear the stories about different women and see what change they've made in life and to celebrate that and then to really just be reminded again like how far we still need to go and to not stop um, trying to make a difference because sometimes we can just like let things go um, and to really go and say okay let's let's celebrate us let's celebrate being a woman and having a voice and being a woman and being strong enough to make a difference but then actually like really make a difference like don't just say it so i think women's month all in all just like reminds me of like just go out there and do it because you can you can now today you are inspiring me <laughs> oh. big time i can do it don't wait this you at the marathon at the end of the year then no well i'm going to slowly slowly yeah but i'm glad to hear that your oldest athlete is about my age you see so, uh, so you've already inspired me at least um to you consider just- it you know so and we like you said you know you must never stop dreaming yes. will it will it i mean you're an amazing top 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 triathlete will you ever take on another you know another sport i think i would first like want to like really achieve everything i can with triathlon because uh, you know i haven't done uh, if i come to the end of the journey and think okay you know i can't do anything better and i'll click it and i'll like okay tick that box you've done everything you can um maybe then i'll stop just becoming a runner or maybe i don't know like completely i'm very up for change maybe i will change you you never know but uh, for now i will first like just want to like really go as far as i can in triathlon and then um but if it doesn't work out i will then just like take another route and like always just try to get the best out of whatever you know i can see you uh, you're not going to take it anything lying down <laughs> yeah. i look forward to seeing you in hawaii <laughs> the 6th 6th of october you said it's october yes then it's the massive of- friend Yes. And is there a time difference? What time do I need to get up to cheer you? Oh, it's massive. Like if you actually it's on the totally different other side of the world, hey? Like I think it's 12 hours and so you're going to need to watch the race like very But it's a good, long like a race. Yeah. I'll catch you. I'll, yeah, okay. yeah, sometime during it. You're going to do everything your whole day and I'm still going to be busy running or swimming or something. Okay. okay. And how many do you know how many athletes are competing with you more or less? Oh, uh, on a day like that it'll be 3000 plus athletes <gasps> but wow. for professional women it's only 50 that you need to qualify you do different races during the year and you need to podium or win a race to be able to qualify as a professional and I've done that now um in April 
um, and then you like only 50 professional women that, that does the race, like all over the world, internationally. I mean, that yeah. is huge absolutely huge i'm completely i am I'm, I'm completely blown away about your uh, by your talent and your perseverance <laughs> and yeah i'm gonna be the 6th of october but i'm gonna be going to swim i'll get my husband to watch with me yeah i like it it's been an absolute pleasure uh, speaking to you Re you are really really inspirational oh, and yeah you, you, you just go girl you just go oh, girl. thank you take the message out there that sisters are doing it for themselves i love it i love it okay <laughs> thanks a lot and there you have it Magda Nivart, top triathlete we are going to be watching her in Hawaii on the 6th of October. Thank you so much for watching with me. And from Omar Fabs, it's a bye. Until next time. Bye.